Alrighty, good, ne good evening everybody and welcome to Nexus Gaming Series. Tonight we have the second matchup for the evening between uh, Div D West teams earlier, uh, just finishing up a few minutes ago. Pigeon Stitches uh, over Stranger Pings 2 to 0, so they will advance uh, for their bracket. And uh, we're going to be casting Boogan Squad, the number one seed, versus Disturbance, the number eight seed this evening. And it does look like the teams are about ready to go here, so let's get a quick look at the maps. As uh, we've got Boogan Squad, Band Out, Volskaya Foundry, and Tomb of the Spider Queen uh, is where we're going picked by Disturbance. Disturbance banned out Towers of Doom. So let me just get everything set up here. I can type in the right place. Confirming. Let's confirm and we'll launch. So again, uh, Boogan Squad kind of taking over that first place seed as uh, the season went on. They uh, managed i believe it oh man it may have been a perfect record or a very close to perfect record um and then uh disturbance uh sneaking in there at the at the last minute into that eighth lead so uh it's gonna be an exciting matchup here starting up and here we go so we again are going to tomb of the spider queen for our first map this evening Elsewhere around the Nexus, uh, Almost Legends defeated Calculated Throw 2-0. And uh, the Found Vikings, if you missed that matchup, uh, barely squeaking out the 2-1 victory over Wood League. And that was the 1st and 8th seed out of Division C East. Uh, so if you missed that, make sure you go catch that. I believe that was on Mongoose's channel, uh, Mongoose underscore 22. So, out of the gate, we've got a Diablo ban coming out of Boogan Squad, followed by a Kerrigan ban for Disturbance. And then a little bit of Asmodan. Haven't seen Asmodan played in a little while, other than in uh, QMs and this stuff. Followed by Kale. So, Asmo and Kale tend to be uh, two bands that you see just kind of connected together, so... Go ahead and write these down. And we got a Rainer pickup right out of the gate here. Pretty quick, solid. They want him. Want to get this match going. Kalkos and Asmo. Spider Queen. All right, then. Let's see what uh, Disturbance has got for us tonight. What kind of... Excitement. Do we have any cheese going on? Are we looking to stay pretty safe? And the new Brack and Ghoul Dan coming up here. So Ghoul Dan's going to have pretty fast wave clear to help with those quick rotations between mid and top. Uh, and Jaina as well. Another solid mage for that. And Jaina building into that kind of combo with the Rainer to uh, get the ace in the hole damage. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Monkus, if you're in chat, I don't know if you're out there or not, but if you are, uh, sorry. Uh, we can talk later about setting up uh, co-casting. I just, I've never done it before, so I don't know how how much has to be changed with that. Malfurion coming out, so they don't want those roots, and of course the mana return for uh, for that Jaina, or the, the silence coming into them, causing all kinds of chaos. Lots of problems for that followed by the Varian. So why would they ban Varian? Who do they want? They don't want to... Uh, maybe looking at a Phoenix or a Genji or you know, some other significant dive. And you know what? If I'm going to show you guys those little pop-ups, I better fix those up right now. So let's see. Bummer not. We got Bummer not on the Rainer. Michael on the Johanna. And picking Johanna there also, it allows them to build into that Jaina for the potential for uh, the Blizzard with the Condemn or the Blessed Shield into the ring. Um, but it also means that they pull the blind away from uh, Disturbance, which is, you know, a really solid thing when you're picking into the Rainer. And ultimately the Tron as well. 
Let's see what uh, what disturbance has for this last slot. Let's see, I'll just. It's gonna be the Malfail. I miss it. All right, let's see if I can get these all done quickly enough. Should have been doing this earlier. My apologies for any of you listening in as I'm typing these out. I like having those little pop-ups show up on the screen just makes it easier. And here we go into game number one on Tomb of the Spider Queen between number one seed Boogan Squad and number eight seed Disturbance in this Division D West playoff series. If you're here for... Uh, for Division D, shout out, say hello to your favorite team. Maybe give a little support to that uh, that eighth seed. They they've got a little bit of an uphill battle going into this, or or uh, just you know add on to the the power of that first seed. All righty here. So for the blue team, it's kind of weird. Sometimes it goes red. For, sometimes it goes blue first. For the blue team, for Boogan Squad, we've got Bummernaut on the Rainer. Mantis is going to be playing Jaina. Michael's going to be on the Johanna. Flamologist is going to be on the uh, Sonya. And Tompis is going to be on Tyrande. For Disturbance, we've got Mambo on the Malthael. Belial on Thrall. Wraithling's going to be on the Ana. Captain Roberts on the Gul'dan. And Kurtz is going to play the Anubarak. All right, so let's... Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Shift Z. All right. So, pretty quick out of the gate here. Everybody's just hanging out. We get a sleep dart on to Johanna, letting her know that they know she's there. And uh, let's take a quick look at these talents as Sonya's going to head down to the bot lane. We do have the Crashed Lightning come out for Thrall. That quest is, uh, is going to be a challenge to build here, but we'll keep an eye on that. Echoed Corruption for the Gul'dan as he's getting some stacks up here against Bummernaut. Raynor pretty far in, but he will pop that Adrenaline Rush to get out. And uh, let's see. Fingers of Frost for Jaina. So those are our quest talents for this evening, at least to start with in this first match. And so far here, fairly quiet after that first push on to Raynor up here in the top lane. Nubrak's going to burrow out as uh, three members of Boogan Squad are going to pay attention to him, get him caught there. And we've got the Sleep Dart onto the Johanna, but she's surrounded by a team, but she's got Iron Skin. She just walks away. The I believe that was a Thrall route that was attempted, but again, Unstoppable defeats your paltry little Feral Spirit. And on bot lane, we've got uh, Sonya fairly low here with this Malthale, so that's a mass up matchup we'll have to keep an eye on. As now Rainer coming down, Sonya's saying, I can't deal with this. Let me let me swap you out. You go deal with that uh, Mouth Ale. And now we've got three rotation from Boogan coming down on the Mouth Ale. The uh, Tyrande stun lands in the Blizzard. And first blood goes over to Boogan squad. And Johanna deep in here gets caught by three members. Once again, she's got that Iron Skin, so she manages to evade the Feral Spirit coming out of Thrall, who's now pretty low on mana. And now up in the top lane, Sonya getting that. That XP picking up some gems. Four coming out for Boogan Squad. So we do have that uh, that Behemoth armor at four. Yeah. For uh, Raynor, the Lunar Flare quest. And Thrall sitting at four stacks of Crash Lightning currently. Boogan Squad looking to get in a quick turn on what they can here as uh, the Sonya is getting some pretty bursty damage on this Malthale. Now he's got some friends coming in. And by friends, I mean not friends. To finish off that second kill of the game, both those kills being on to Mouth L. Again, completing that turn in, and uh, Wraithling manages to catch the Sleep Dart, but he initially started with the Healing Dart. So currently sitting at 24 gems for Boogan Squad, as now 36, now that uh, Johanna is able to get hers turned in. So no real contesting of the turn-ins from uh, from Disturbance. So they've been able to just, just get all of those in mostly without consequence here. 
Kurt's going to be able to burrow out. So overall, other than those two picks, these these fights have been relatively short. And we'll see at some point here, we're going to start seeing these teams wanting to fight a little bit more aggressively. And it looks like they're looking at this mouth ale again. Cue the Jaws music as he does pull back this time. And now the Sleep Dart going out again on the Johanna. But uh, Mambo there on the uh, mouth ale, unable to really kill a Johanna, and, he, and certainly by himself. The Feral Spirit goes out on the Rainer, but he's able to walk away from it. No uh, CC follow-up, but there goes the Echo Corruption onto Rainer. The dive-in from Anubarak, they've got a ton of damage, but here comes the Maltheal getting uh, pulled in and and uh, chunked down he heavy. And once again, everybody pretty well full up on health, or pretty close to it. No real significant value, as Belial's going to come down here to the bot lane and try to turn in his gems. We're starting to see those level 7 talents coming up. Let's see, what do we have here? Alright, so we do see the Celestial Attunement cleansing out those stun silences and slows from the Tyrande. Uh Cooldown reduction for Johanna when she auto-attacks. Uh, the uh, Poison Spear for that dot damage. And it looks like uh, that slow for Raynor. Johanna about half health, taking some poke damage as uh, they're slowing down the turn-ins, but looks like they'll get uh, another 9 in. But Mambo apparently thought he was Gul'dan and started to move away or interrupt his channel, but it looks like they will get those in. Down in the bot lane, however, bot turn-in here, it's a 4 versus 3 as they do get the poke on it to prevent the turn-in. Jaina's going to get some blizzard damage onto Anubarak, and it's now a 4 versus 5 as Malthay on the top lane trying to get Soak, and they do turn in here. 49 gems now, so they just need a turn in bottom or top. They do get that turn in. So the first web weavers going over to disturbance. They're a little bit behind in XP. They're about a half a level behind in XP, but they do have their level sevens now. So we'll see if they can get some good push out of this. Thrall's a little bit low on mana, so we'll see how that goes for him, especially with this lurking Sonya. And in the top lane, it looks like it's going to be Wraithling on the Ana and Mambo with the uh, Mouth Ale trying to get this lane pushed up to get some value out of the spider. In the mid lane, however, we've got three of Bugen Squad coming in with the Gul'dan and Anubrak. Unfortunately, just not a lot to be done there, so that spider goes down really quickly. They're looking, they're relying heavily on this top lane now, so uh, the first, first Web Weaver phase looking to not get a, a ton of value. Usually it, it doesn't get that much, but you hope to get uh, at least a wall or two down, and right now it looks like it's going to be the wall, but Maybe not even a turret here in the top. In the bot lane, we see most of a turret and no real value in mid. So so not a whole lot of value out of that. They are still a half a level behind. Um, maybe there was some quest stacking going on. Looks like we got some Echo Corruption out there. Jaina nearly complete with that Fingers of Frost. She's up to 19 out of 20 globes. And in the bot lane now here, Thrall having to pull back as we do see that Bummer Knot on Rainer is going to go ahead and come down and start this siege camp. And they're going to use that pressure then to build towards 10 and to work on maybe getting that turn but Bugen sniffs this or I'm sorry uh Disturbance sniffs this out comes down and says you know what? you're almost done with that we would like that too and with a three-man rotation they do pick that up Bugen picking up their camp their uh spell armor camp however and looking for a turn soon here they're now 10 Tens are online. We've got the uh, Shadow Stock, and here they go in on Nubrak. Chunked down to half before he can burrow out, and now Johanna's going to go ahead and get that turn in. It looks like they're not going to be able to stall it. So we do see the uh, Shadow Stock, the Ring of Frost, Blessed Shield, Rainer's Raider, and Sonya has yet to select her heroic. So we'll see whether she feels that the, uh, the Leap or the Wrath will be better. Malfail picking up their camp so that they have a little bit of counter pressure on this. And the ring going out hits three members of Disturbance. Down goes Ana thanks to that big blizzard. I don't think she was in the spell armor quite yet, but that was that was a hell of a ring. Uh, Captain Roberts on Gul'dan is going to get caught by the wave by the spider. Oh, no. And he goes down behind the wall. And here you go. This is here's comes the push from these web weavers top lane already has taken some pretty significant damage in the middle. We've got the wall down both towers and now Sonya coming down here to get 
the wall and towers down as well from the bot lane. So that mid Wedweaver is going to get uh, removed from the game here, and then the top is, is the next target here for both Ana and Malthale. But down in the bot lane, we now have three of Bugen Squad, four coming in with Mantis there. Johanna shortly behind, so this is going to be the first fort going down of the game. Heroics here for uh, Disturbance are now online as the Blessed Shield goes out on the Nubrak, hits three members of Disturbance. The Burrow charge out, but into the Blizzard. Belial gets caught in the Blizzard. They do get an, a uh, Cocoon out to help counter the pressure. The uh, Horrify goes out inside of the Earthquake. The uh, Q from Rainer managing to knock back the Nubrak as no deaths on either side with those uh, many heroics used. And now Bugen Squad looking to turn in and get another back-to-back -back turn in here. As the Ring of Frost going out doesn't hit anybody, but Thrall gets deleted. And Nubrak charges in, but he's a little bit deep. He's probably going to go down here if they can just get one, one or two more hits on him. There he goes. Jaina looking to keep going, but she's not quite able to catch up to Captain Roberts. Misses that uh, Frostbolt Q. So just as uh, we have a moment here. Real quick, take a look at the heroics. We've got the Cocoon coming out for Anubarak, the Earthquake for Thrall. Horrify, as we just saw in that Gul'dan. <laughs> the Owl from Nowhere managing to hit Malthale. Uh, last Rites for Malthale and the Nano Boost for the Ana. So down a talent here, you're probably going to lose this mid lane. And there, wow, just barely missing the Ana. And Captain Roberts and Ana getting caught by the Blessed Shield but luckily able to make that out, as now in the bot lane, the uh, Webweaver pushing in on this bot lane as well. Thrall's gonna go ahead and finish it up before it gets any significant value, but now up in the top here, Ugin's pushing in, they managed to finish that fort, and Malthale with 22 gems is sitting fairly low. And now we see Bugen setting up for either pushing on this boss or taking a gank or just safely hearthing. That's all they wanna do. Go to your home, ball. If you don't get that reference, you're too young. Sorry. So now they're checking the boss, making sure that they're not there. Let's take a look down here. So Rainer just turned in 16. We got Toronto and Sonya picking up this bot camp, the siege camp, looking to get that push in the bot lane, get whatever value they can out of this. And we've got now Disturbance turning in up to 34 gems looking for their second web weavers and we now have uh, 13s coming online or disturbance as well so we've got this bot lane pressure coming out for the siege giant they're not yet going back there now they're they're going the new trying to turn in six i feel like this is a little cheeky maybe a little bit uh, aggressive for what he needs to be doing right now but looks like he's gonna go ahead and back out and now boogan squad gets some more gems turned in and I guess they're in the vision, so Disturbance could certainly pay attention to that. But Raider coming up here, trying to set up for this boss. They don't have a talent advantage. They do have a two-level advantage. I believe all the heroics, yeah, all the heroics look good. So just looking for this gank. They they know they're coming. Sonya's not there. Malthale's clearing out the camp. The, uh, the boss check from Anubarak, so he knows that they're at least not on it. But here they come. The ring manages to hit the Anubarak. He pops his shield, the leap in from uh, Sonya, and there goes the bug. Sonya just jumped in and squished him. Ana's going to get hers turned in, followed by Mambo. And they do have enough for turn, but I believe, yeah, they're all on Gul'dan. So that's a good long time before he's going to be able to get over there. But if they don't get that turned in, they won't have any counter pressure against this boss, and this is likely going to be a top keep in favor of Bugen Squad. It may yet be, but at least this gives you some counter pressure in the other lanes. And maybe you get some value out of that. Maybe you get the uh maybe you get a fort down somewhere. But right now you gotta get back and defend this boss in the top lane from taking your top keep. So here we go. So Nubrax the first up here, followed by the Ana and the Malthale. Fortunately the Gul'dan and Thrall, most of your damage for that is not here yet. But they are on their way, and thanks to this turn-in, uh, they do get Bugen Squad. To f they're forced to go back, clear these mid and bot lanes. They don't want to lose any structures. They do get the boss killed 
Uh, their top web weaver is about half now, so it won't it won't make it too far toward those structures. But it does give them a little bit of breathing room. They don't lose a keep. Uh, I believe they yeah they did lose the wall, but they still have a turret up there. So we've got some defenses still and 16 up for Boogan Squad. So we do see make sure that's the root. It is the root. Good, just making sure. Uh, we see the owl, the nerves of steel, uh, blind heals. And look at that blessed shield hitting three members of Disturbance as the leap goes in onto the Ana. She gets booped away. Uh, Wraithling is getting chunked down, but the ring coming out hits four members of Disturbance, including the Ana. But she's she's managing to stay alive, but can't keep the bug alive. Uh, now the Johanna getting caught by the last rites goes down. So a one for one trade uh, in addition to ten heroics, both sides burning everything. And now, Ugin Squad has enough for turn in. And it looks like they're going to try to get it. But Thrall, trying to get there, realizes that 1v4 might not be in his best interest. And he backs away. So the top lane is fairly pushed out. The mid lane is, is roughly uh, about halfway, just a little bit behind. And of course, Malthale goes down as I'm talking about other things. And then in the bot lane, it's obviously pushed heavily. So they really have to focus on getting the de defense on this bottom keep. And then moving to mid and then moving to top if they can just try to push that out a little bit. So we do have the Thrall and a Nubrak in the bot lane trying to get as much as they can on this Web Weaver and the Gul'dan doing the same in the mid. Top lane right now, however, is getting caught. They're they're pushing in on this uh, wall or this turret now. And both of the other lanes are clear. So you might be able to get up here and save your keep if everybody gets here quickly. But Thrall right now is pretty far behind. And here comes the Blessed Shield. Manages to pull in with Condemn the uh, Ana and the Gul'dan. But they are not able to save that keep. They'll get the damage on the Spider. Boogan Squad said, that's all we're coming for. We'll be back later. And now, in the mid lane, here they go, working on that turret, that tower. The Sleep Dart missing the uh, Sonya. And now they're back out for mid. So where do you want to go now, Boogan Squad? The map is pretty much all in your favor. You can get both camps at this point. You could uh, they, they have no idea where you're going because they have no vision on either. Until, of course, you pop out that uh, Toronto Owl. So they know you're there. They're coming. They're going to get there too late to get the camp. But can they stop and get one of you? It doesn't look like... That's the case. Just barely managing to make it out. And now, in reverse, it's 5 versus 5, and they know where you are. The Blessed Shield going out, the leap onto the uh, front line. The Root manages to catch the Maelthel as Jaina just obliterates the Ana and the uh, Nubarak. And now she's looking to catch this Gul'dan. Gets him rooted, gets the Blizzard out, and he cannot get away. And now Belial in the back cannot do anything. He can't run into that fort because that'll kill him. And now a five-man team wipe in favor of Boogan Squad with their level 20s. While we wait for them to figure out whether they're going to keep or not, uh, we've got the auto attack level 20, so the extra uh, Lunar Flare coming out of the Tyrande. We do have the upgraded Ring of Frost for that cooldown, uh, the Spear to uh, additional armor and range. Is that the Johanna version of Storm Shield and then of course Execute for Raynor. So here we go, all five members of Boogan Squad plus their double armor camp here. Johanna get, or sorry, Jaina gets put in the cocoon and is gonna get pulled out pretty quickly. Michael getting chunked down to about half, but pops his iron skin. And Jaina about half as well, having to move back, gets the ice block, the leap in on the back line onto Malthale as Malthale will now go down. Anubrak diving in, trying to slow the progress of the DPS on this, but unfortunately just a little bit too late to, to do anything there as Boogan Squad will finish game one on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Ooh, and that was blue. Alrighty then, so let's take a look at these stats. 15 kills to one. Uh, pretty rough, and the one kill being the Johanna, the nearly unkillable one on the team, but... Well done on behalf of Sonya and Johanna, just keeping that front line alive. 
and uh, making sure that Disturbance simply could not get in on the targets that they wanted to. Um, quick overview of the talents. Of course, the level 20s not picked up as they weren't quite uh, at that level to do so for Disturbance. And again, pretty well, you know, about what you'd expect. Again, haven't seen this Blinded by the Light. I think I've seen it three times uh, in casts in the last few days. And I don't think I've ever seen it picked up before. And most of the time, I think this is this is the kind of thing where, you know, if you're going in on the core at, at the end of the game, um, you don't necessarily need that indestructible. And so now you're looking to... Um, now you're looking to make sure that you can push as hard as you can, get that sustain for your team in that last push. Uh, let's see here. So Tom Peace. After Yes. All right. So we'll be back in a moment. Uh, if you're not familiar, we do have an NGS Patreon to keep things going around here. Make sure that we have things like a uh, website and um, art design and things like that. Uh, check out the Patreon, the commercial that's about to pop up, but there are a lot of different rewards that you can get there, like player cards, and uh, depending on the level of your sponsorship, even replay uh, casts or uh, what do they have? Highlight reels and uh, Mr. Fisky as well has a, uh, has a potential cast in there. So check that out and we'll be back in just a moment. Alrighty, welcome back. So the teams uh, hopped in really quickly. So uh, the, the countdown timer, I decided to just 
eliminate that. So our first game of the match going over to Boogan Squad on Tomb of the Spider Queen. And with that, Disturbance elected for first pick. And so our next game is going to be at Infertile Shrines selected by Boogan Squad. Let me double check to make sure uh, both teams are ready. And then if they are, we will get right into this. So Infernal Shrines, uh, let's see, Tom's ready, Wraithling's ready. Okay, starting up. Here we go. So Infernal Shrines, uh, some of those bands that we had first game, Diablo, Kerrigan, Kael'thas, even in, you know, to a certain degree, uh, the Asmodan, um, can really bring a lot of challenge and pain in this map. Um, so we'll see if we follow a very similar line of thinking with regard to bans this game. Yep, no surprise that the first ban out of this is the Kerrigan. If it was good enough to ban on Tomb of the Spider Queen, it's good enough to ban on Infernal Shrines. And followed, of course, by Diablo. So I imagine uh, we're going to see very similar bans this last round. Yeah. Do we see the Asmo? We do. All right. First pick. First selection on this game two is going to be Rainer. So Rainer switching sides going to be picked up by Captain Roberts. And in no time flat, we see a Nubarak and Jaina coming out for uh, Mantis once again on that Jaina. A uh, Bummernaut's going to go ahead and pick up the uh, Nubarak. Now, last game, Bummernaut was on Rainer, so given how quickly they selected that Anubarak, they uh, maybe they saw the riding on the wall that they weren't getting Rainer on this one. Jaina has pretty good uh, clear for the objective. Uh, Orphea, a little bit less so, just because her cooldowns are, I think, a little bit longer. Um, let's see, so who's that? Wraithling. So Wraithling going from... Oh, I had these on the wrong people, didn't I? Hmm. Wraithling was on Ana. Uh, that's what I get for doing it last second. So Brightwing going to be picked up by Belial. So Belial was Thrall last game. I have a feeling they're going to change people around on me. And that's probably what happened last game. And then the Tyrande. So Tyrande gives you that good follow-up with the Anubarak stuns. Um, cleanses, potentially, depending on what they go into. Certainly the Brightwing um, poly. And then we got the Blaze and Alex Straza. Let's see. So Alex for Tom Peace and Blaze is going to be on Michael. Well, the other way around. Michael's on Blaze. So a little bit of role swapping around here, unless they change the uh, go to that last minute, you know, swap, which which could happen. Kurtz and Mambo, what you guys got for? So ETC coming out for Mambo. And Leoric for Kurtz. So they've got the potential between that ETC, the Leoric, and the Orphea to go for that Eternal Feast. And uh, Brightwing... Hmm, let's see, what do we have? We could even go with a Hyperion into that. The Brightwing maybe provides for spell armor primarily. Or is just a comfort pick for Belial. We'll see how this turns out. So here's our draft, ladies and gentlemen, for game number two going into Infernal Shrines. Currently, the standings 1-0 in favor of Boogan Squad. And we'll see if Disturbance can come back and tie this series up. Now, Disturbance, I will let you know, Wood League in Division C East put on a heck of a show, managed to get to game three, nearly defeated the found Vikings. So there's no pressure, but we fully expect that you do the exact same thing in these uh, two games here, because you're, you're going to come back on this one, and then you're going to put up a, an amazing fight on the next one. So let's make that happen as we head into game number two on Infernal Shrines. 
All right, so for Boogan Squad, our home team, number one seed, we've got Bummernaut on the Anubarak. Michael's going to be on the Blaze. Tompeace is going to be on Alex Straza. Blamologist is going to be on Cassia. And Mantis on the Jaina, popping off the taunts and B-steps for Boogan Squad. For Disturbance, over here on the right, we have Belial going to be playing that Brightwing. Kurtz is going to be on the Leoric. Wraithling on the Orphea, Mambo on ETC, and Captain Roberts rounding out the team for Disturbance on Rainer. All right, let's zoom out here. Feels very similar to last game. We see just about everybody hanging out in the mid, but Leoric's going to go top lane. He's uh, just interested in getting that soak started early. They were a little bit behind last game, so hopefully the XP soak between top and bottom, they can get them catch this up a little faster this time and we do see the uh unstoppable what's that called new habits for blaze so that he can get that uh unstoppable globe quest as moving squad's going to rotate down onto captain roberts here he's got to be careful but it looks like he's fairly safe he cleared his lane etz rotating down to make sure that he is uh, in fact safe as far as quest talents, we do see also the uh, Q talent for Cassia, this Thunderstroke, Prog Rock for uh, ETC, and the Frostbite again for Jaina. We do see there a stun coming out of the Anubarak, but right into the wall, so they're still relatively safe. Even with those beetles, they don't want to get too close in on that. Rainer continuing to hang out on this bot lane, just wants to push and then let that wave crash. It might have been one or two minions that they lost here. And now that it's pushed up, uh, Rainer and Orphea can come pick up this mid camp on their safe side. However, if you're Boogan Squad, you might be mindful that this is going on. So we'll see if they, yeah, they managed to get that done quickly enough to prevent uh, them from coming in and doing anything about that. And we have, we do have the Brightwing soaking the mid lane too. So getting some some good soak XP. They are just slightly ahead currently. As now, Boogan Squad will come pick up their camp, which will probably put them right about even. Down in the bot here, we do see a three-man rotation for Disturbance, looking to get in on this camp. And once again, get that greater XP and get a little bit of pressure in that bot lane as well. Mid camp picked up by uh, Boogan Squad. Around the same time as the bot camp is picked up by Disturbance, so each of these teams rotating into the appropriate lanes to clear those up, keep them from doing any structure damage against them. And up in the top lane, we have the Snooze Fest between Leoric and Blaze, both of them having the ability to heal themselves right back to full. I guess maybe technically slightly in favor of Leoric since he has all of that mana. But Blaze is going to come down here as they are now going to start working on their Shaman camp, as we will see the exact same way over here can i get them both yeah i can exact same out of disturbance and boogan will cap theirs just slightly ahead and now this arcane punisher shrine is all set and ready to go let's zoom in on this action a little bit here and the shrine is activated here as we have a full 5v5 rotating in the middle uh, the anubrak stun does manage to hit several members of disturbance Blinded happening to hit the uh, Leoric and ETC now having to charge away. The early Dragon Queen trying to push everybody back and get whatever value they can out of the beginning portion of this shrine. And now that they are 18 to 8, they can come back in on this disturbance as Blaze gets heavily chunked out by the Orphea. Leoric does manage to Wraith Rock away as now Cassie is in danger, but the Blaze Stun manages to stun out the etc and keeps cassia alive and allows her to disengage a little bit of extra damage on that blaze at the end of that as well so now disturbance is going to be able to catch up on this shrine and take a little bit of a lead as uh boogan squad needs to rejuvenate get their life back together and blaze catching just enough healing to come back into this wants to get here as quickly as he can a new diving in hits four members with that q stun that impale but Bummer not getting just chunked down very low, 150 health, as now Cassie is well taking a bunch of damage. 39, 40, and the first Punisher of the game going over to Disturbance. No kills yet for either team, but the, the Punisher will go over to Disturbance. 
thanks to that significant pressure they had on the Blaze and the uh, Nubrak eventually. Alex, go ahead and pop this over the wall. Doesn't have a lot of health here, so the Punisher's able to bring her down to half almost immediately. This front wall, however, is going to be taken pretty well uncontested by Disturbance, but the Punisher's not able to get that much damage itself out onto anything because it's just pulled so far back. It does get that four to down maybe 25 30 percent or so so that'll that's about the best case scenario you can hope for if your disturbance is get that value out of the wall get the xp out of those turrets and force them to uh fight that punisher away from you level sevens online we'll pick up those fours as well so quests we do see once again the behemoth armor for the rainer and now the orphea uh, E-Quest, the Mind Devourer, giving her the potential for a significantly reduced cooldown when she hits it correctly once she has those 40 stacks. It also increases that damage pretty significantly, so look out for Orpheus combo when we get a little bit later here with that ETC Mosh or the uh, Leoric Entomb. Up in the top lane. Still taking a nap. Just go ahead and play that Intermution music. And in the bot lane, Cassie is watching this take place. Is gonna walk in for an unknown reason, but ETC power slides in, knocks away the Anubarak, and no real value there for either team, just a little bit less mana for uh, ETC. And now it is a four versus two in the bot lane. Of course, Brightwing always in a position that she can come in here if they happen to get into a good position or need to get out of a bad position. But this time now, Disturbance is the uh, the team that's up a half a level. They've really made a, a significant change here, and it's mostly because they don't have those early deaths from the Maldale that they had in the last game. Once again, Leoric and Blaze, they're still happening. And we've got this bot rotation as level 10s coming online for Disturbance. We do have the Emerald Wind, Rainer's Raider, the, the Mosh Pit, of course. Uh, and we'll see those other two here soon. As far as Mosh encounters, uh, you've got the Anubrak stuns, the Cassia if she takes the Valkyrie. Um, Blaze can't charge in, but if he does complete that quest, he would be able to use his charge with the Pyromania. And now Blaze is out of mana, so Leoric winning that just slightly. Uh, we do see Water Elemental. The Valkyrie did come out, so now they've got two characters with that solid counter. And, uh, of course, Dragon Queen, but by the time that Dragon Queen loans and you knock him back out, you're already... the damage is done. And Cleansing Flame coming out for Alex Straza. And the Bunker Drop for Blaze. I almost forgot what that even looked like, because we've seen so many combustion games. Lyric does pick up that Entomb. Orphea still has not selected her ult. I won't be surprised, uh if they don't go into Eternal Feast just because of the comp and setup they have. And now this top shrine becoming active. It is a frozen shrine. Here comes the Brightwing in to make sure that we've got a full five on five. And just wait, because in a moment, we're going to see some explosive things happening. Orphea chomping around those minions, trying to get some damage in on that shaman camp to slow down the pressure here in this top lane. Rainer's Raider Banshee is very low here as now Leoric gets the spooky hand on the Nubrak. The Nubrak goes, uh, cocoons the ETC, the dive in on Captain Roberts on the Raider. He does boop them away, but just a little bit too late comes the Emerald Wind. And now the Mosh Pit with the Eternal Feast, managing to hit two members. Blameologist goes down as Bummernaut's in the middle of that uh, Leoric Entomb, but dives away. Michael as well in that Eternal Feast for what seems like forever but manages to get out. And the damage coming in, the four-man charge stun coming out of Blaze pushes them back just enough. And now Rainer's going to be back on the table. He'll be here shortly. And for Bugen, you're, you've got three heroes here that are half health waiting on that heal. Anubrak gets stunned by the power slide, knocked back. The Dragon Queen gets popped, pushes back both Leoric and ETC. And your front line is split off from your back line, so you got to be careful here. The Burrow Charge in hits two members, Brightwing and ETC, as now the Impale goes out and hits half the team. And they're going to go ahead and disengage. Now that the, now that the Dragon Queen's done, they're going to go ahead and leave. 18 to 14, very slightly ahead uh, for Bugen. 
And here they come. They have uh, three ults back up, including Entomb Internal Feast. So there goes the Eternal Feast, but there's no com no way to keep them there, locked down into it. The Entomb goes out on Mantis and uh, Blaze, I think it was. The Anubrak charge stun does get in as they will take out that Orphea. The Emerald Wind just a little bit too late to save her uh, with ETC being in that cocoon as well. ETC does power slide over the Anubrak, but does not get that kill. And here comes, uh, he's trying to keep going on somebody to get something, but there's just no follow-up with the uh, Orphea dead and shortly thereafter the Rainer dead. And the second Punisher now going over to Bugen Squad. Frozen Punisher, so you got a little bit of CC coming out on this. You have to be really careful. Maybe Leoric baits this, but ETC, I was going to say, ETC's a little close for that. And did they make it over the wall? Yeah, he did, barely. All right, so everybody's getting rooted over here. Punisher's going to town, just punching people in the face, having a good time. He likes doing that. And right now, we've got this front wall down, and Root's just hitting everywhere. Now the two-man stun coming out of that Punisher, having a, just a good old time. As now Cassia pushing in this bot lane, getting the XP that they need to get up to 13. Uh, well, they, had, they got that earlier, but whatever. You know what I, you know what I mean, working on that 16. That's 16 game. And she is going to get some damage down here as she uh, clears up this lane and is working on getting these walls down. Looks like five member rotation. Okay, maybe not five. Four member rotation coming out of Boogan Squad. The slow on Takazi as she fends in on the uh, Leoric. The spooky hand probably saving his life there. That was a lot of damage. Holy cow. Take a look at those level 13 talents. We do have the Is It Pass Fine Zonas, Life Unbound, or the uh, Alex Straza. And Cassia sitting at 15 stacks on her Q quest. She just hasn't been able to really get in and, and hit people with those. Uh, now she's up to 17, of course. Uh, and Rainer as well, a little bit low on his quest stack, sitting at 12 for that Behemoth Armor. So ways to go for each of those as Blaze does manage to finish his level one quest so now he will be unstoppable that's a that's an unstoppable you got to watch out for if you're etc make sure you don't get that interrupted mosh the power slide over the blaze as he does pop that unstoppable but there goes the cocoon dive in and belial is going to go ahead and get that emerald wind allow them to disengage as etc now coming in the bunker dropped in the back after that wind cleansing flame going out just just getting a little bit of damage on everybody making sure that everybody is healed up on her team and taking a little bit of damage on the side of Disturbance. Cassia once again going back into that bot lane looking to get that XP as Brightwing is trying to make her slow way up here. It's currently a 4v4 but no healing on the side of Disturbance but they don't seem to care. They're all pretty well full health still so no big deal to them. Ugh, excuse me. If you hear these occasional pauses, it's because I'm yawning occasionally. It's fairly late on the uh, East Coast here. As now Cassia getting caught. Rainer doing some damage, but of course, as long as Cassia is moving, she's got that 40 physical armor, so Rainer just doesn't do as much. It's like having tracer damage, but drastically slowed. Both teams now looking to get their shaman camp, and we'll get them just about the same time. And now Rainer posting his Banshee in the middle there to keep an eye out. It looks like they instead want to come to this top lane. They want to clear out these shamans so that they can start working on that uh, shrine. And 15, or I'm sorry, 16 just about to come up for Boogan Squad. So here you go. There's the Blaze ch Charge in. Two members get caught by that stun, and Bla uh, Brightwing gets just destroyed by that Jaina Blizzard. And ETC is caught in this cocoon likely goes down from this yeah with as much cc chain they've got there there was no real way for him to make it out kind of surprised he did the knockback first instead of just power sliding but you know what don't think he had a chance either way so 16 now online we have the silence coming out for brightwing uh the additional armor for power slide from uh, etc and then of course that percent damage for rainer and it looks like in the top lane, we got Rainer and Orphea going in, trying to get some structure damage here while they, they don't have the ETC. They got to get some kind of value. And of course, the Orc doing very much the same in the bot lane, trying to get the structure damage, trying to get the XP, uh, because now they've got to play toward 20. They do still have their mid fort and their mid wall up. So at least they'll have a fairly defendable uh, position here as now this Mortar Punisher comes in. 
So this time they won't have to worry about those big roots coming out of the Punisher, but you still have the uh, the damage, the punches, and the leap going out onto ETC. As now all five members of Disturbance are here. While in the top lane, we see the two of Bugen Squad are looking to get that top fort, and it does look like it's going to go down. The two-man stun coming out of the Punisher, just beating up on Wraithling. As Anubrak cocoons the ETC, dives in, manages to hit the Rainer, and the Blaze stun misses, but he does pop that Unstoppable, and Orphea will go down from Alex, draws his Cleansing Flame, Jaina following it up on the Brightwing. ETC trying to make it out alive, but there's just so much to go through. And I don't even know what happened. Oh, the Valkyrie managed to pull the Leo through the wall there. And they're able to bring him down. A triple kill just for that Jaina. Four kills in total for Bugen Squad. As now they're looking to push in on this keep. I don't think they can core here, but maybe they can. The, the keep's still going, and they're pinging it. They're trying to remind their team, hey guys, this is still up. We can't keep going on this. And the first keep in the game going over to Disturbance. I'm so, <laughs> Disturbance. Boogan Squad, whichever team team I'm talking about over here. The, the one on the left, the blue one. Alrighty. If you're Disturbance, you have all five of your team up. They know that where you are located and manage to kill that camp very quickly. Rainer sending his raider in to scout out try to see if there's anybody still there but they're all gone and now they're gonna come over here and get their camp and Tom Peace Alex Straza being a little cheeky running right up into their face I mean I don't know that was that could have been questionable but they only had Brightwing and Leoric so five-man push coming out of Boogan in the bot lane now that they've got their siege camp in the bot and the siege camp in mid pushing and you're level 17 going against 19. This is uh, this is the time where you need to to make a fight happen. There's the Leo and Tomb as the Valkyrie goes out. Anubrak manages to make it out, but Cassie is going to go down in that Eternal Feast. The bunker goes down. Jaina gets into it, and the ETC comes out of that cocoon. As now it's a five versus four uh, advantage in favor of Disturbance, so they don't even lose that fort. But they are only going to be able to get that one kill. It looks like. And with that kill, they want to try to push in on this uh, this bottom fort as well. But you got to be careful. You don't have any minions here, so you're just taking free damage from the fort. As Anubrak dives in, the blaze stun manages to stun the ETC as well. Belial gets caught by uh, Anubrak, but the Emerald Wind will push them back. And now you have a four versus four. And Leo chunked down, now down to about a third of his health. Same with Anu uh, Brightwing getting caught by the Anubrak. Blaze Charge stuns the Brightwing, but they're standing in that Eternal Feast, just taking some free damage. Now they'll go ahead and finish off that fort, and Rainer, sitting about half now, has to try to find a way out of this mess, as he will just continue taking damage from that Jaina, Water Elemental, and the Blaze attacks. And somewhere in there, they managed to also find damage on the Orphea. And so now in the mid lane, you've got this Siege Camp, you have two Catapults, you have 30 seconds before anybody's awake. And it looks like that is going to be the end of the game, as Alex Straza pops Dragon Queen, and they are going hard onto the core. 50% ETC is your only hope, and he just gets cocooned. He doesn't even get to play the video game as the core goes down. On game number two, Infernal Shrines. Let's pull up the uh, pull up the standings here. So D West tournament. So that was Boogan Squad versus Disturbance. Uh, the next match for them will be either against Clouded Minds or OC Peach Boys. So that is the uh, what is that? The fourth and fifth seeds out of Div D West. And let's see if we can get Tom Peace and or somebody else in here. All right, let's go to that. Oh, I didn't put you on the stats. Let me put you on the stats. Stats, stats, stats. There we go. So 14 to till two, very much like uh, game one. Um, just lobby one. Let me go find my way over there and make sure I can actually get in that lobby. Yeah, I can. Okay. So, 
Uh, welcome, Tompy. So that was uh, very quick that you got to hop in here with me. So I, I didn't even get a chance to update the <laughs> the map or oh, shit. anything. Sorry, so man. no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> welcome. Uh, talk slowly when you tell me how that match went for you and how you felt about that. Felt pretty good. You don't have to um, talk slowly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, felt good. Uh, we that's how we can play. So we were pretty happy with it, and it's kind of. We didn't have, uh, you know, one of our main main guys with us. We we had uh, one of our bench players with us who, who's also pretty good. So, you know, we again, same thing as always. We feel pretty good together, and it was a good game. So which slacker bench player is that? Hmm. Camp Bellas. He's uh, in the process of moving, I guess. So he didn't have a availability for his Gotcha. So who was uh, who was in place for camp today? Uh, it was Blamologist. You know what? Uh, th that makes sense. I was trying to remember as I was saying that name a couple times. I'm like, I don't remember struggling with his name before. I, <laughs> something's going wrong here. So congratulations. So 2-0 victory for you guys in the first round of the uh, playoffs. And of course, my overlay is not working for this. It should show your logo. It doesn't. Oh, well, it says your name. Congratulations on that. So, so uh, did you guys do a lot of prep for this or um, were you pretty well prepared for, for disturbance going into it? Um, I wouldn't say we did a ton. I mean, we have a we have an idea on what we want to do on on most maps and and some comps we want to work on and and go for. So we have an idea on what we want to do. We kind of remembered um a little bit from the last time we played them, um you know what they what they played and did a little research on it and um we were we were pretty prepared. So as prepared as we could. Sure. And the the standings, like as I recall, we we talked uh, not all that long ago. That you guys had done very well in Div D West. Um, did you guys? You guys didn't lose any matches, right? Or did you lose one? We did lose one. It was the the Asmo Carry match. Um, that was our ah, first. That's right. Our first right. loss. Yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to hopefully. I think they're on the opposite end of the bracket there, but hopefully we can get back to that point and, and give them a, a nice rematch there because we were, again, a little frustrated with that one, but it was good for us. Good for us to learn there some things that we we hadn't seen before. So. Sure. Yeah. So they are uh, on the other other side there. Uh, right now, the the other side. I don't know if you were aware of this or checking the chat, but Pigeon Stitches did win their game against Stranger Pings. So it'll be either Asmo Carry or Sack of Brick. So if you're going to have that rematch, it's going to be uh, what in the in the finals then for Div D West, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's what I was looking at. So um, we did. We did. Uh, I don't think I watched. I don't know if any of you guys watched it, but I didn't watch the the pigeon stitches match. But uh, I did kind of see the update on it, and uh, we feel pretty prepared for that too. So um, we're looking forward. Sure. So your next match against uh, is going to be against either Clouded Minds or OC Peach Boys. How'd you guys play against them? And uh, do you, would is there a preference on either team that you're that you would rather play against? Uh, what do you guys think? I don't know. Um, Both of them beat us once, so it's anybody's game. But I think Peach, no. Disturbance, uh, they've got a one-trick Maiev, so as long as we ban them, I think we'll be okay. No, nah, Disturbance is who we played tonight. It was uh, it was one of those two teams, either Cloud or well, Pigeon said. One of those we're guys, all, anyways. We're all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, one of them yeah. one of them did, and, and we'll do the research on it when it comes down to it. But... Um, yeah, I don't think we really care too much on, on who we play. I think we feel pretty confident going into into whatever. Sure. And so, so yeah, one of those Div D West teams plays in my have occasionally, right? So, <laughs> right. So uh, your guys' uh, bands were very similar uh, each game. You had the Diablo Asmo out of the the one two. So, um, d so I, I just have to ask this: Is Asmo pretty? consistently played in div d or does he just get banned because it's a it's the thing that we've always done like how does that work out guys? well um i would are all that afraid of an asthma or anything like that i think we just kind of do the research on what um you know what their plan and, and what their what their uh their likes are for heroes and kind of go for go with that and at least that's what we did tonight you know we kind of we kind of change up our strategy on what we're going to do you know per match but that was our idea this time and um, so, you know, I'm not too worried about an Asmo, but that was our idea there. Sure. Well, and you know what? It worked out for you guys. I think you had one death in game one uh, on the Johanna. And then in game two, you guys had two deaths. Um, I 
specifically recall Cassia. Yeah, I was going to say Cassia died <laughs> twice. Um, I remembered one. Oh, we let him know, too. We let him know. About <laughs> Off the team. Gotcha. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, no, you guys did really well in both games. Uh, you know, it looked like y you really punished hard when they, especially in that early game on game one, when, you know, Malthale was just a little bit too far forward. You know, those first two mm -hmm. kills really set the stage for the game, gave you a half level XP advantage going into those ults. Um, you know, and they they showed some life at the beginning of this game. They were first to ten, got that first Punisher. Um, but once you guys once you, once you guys got to ten, you really just turned cranked it up, and uh, and had a had a good time. Punished their kind of poor positioning. Um, do you have any any comments for that, or or just anything to to say to disturbance? You know, they um they really did a good job, especially that first objective there. They did a good job backing off the Alex Draws of Dragon there. I got a little. Uh, little premature on those there and uh, they did a good job back in our backing off on it and i think that's kind of what won it for them because when you get when you get dragon popped and once that's over with especially early on for alex Straza, there's not much i can do for him so um but i'd say the earlier games mantis really really nailed some some ring of frost there and um just really set up some big kills for us and i mean honestly everybody everybody played really well i mean um you know i think i think everybody's pretty happy with how they did it well, Mantis, I do want to say you're in here. Yeah, you are. Uh, you had one ring of frost that hit three members. I, I think it might have been completely blind. At that I threw wall. my blessed shield. I threw my blessed oh, shield out, and he saw it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we're we're really good at timing those uh, those engages with some big time roots and blizzards coming out. Yeah, it was it was a, a just a monster catch there in that in that first game. Um, in I believe it was that mid lane with the uh, the spiders just coming up and and the I guess the blessed shield you know set it up and then the ring and then I think Ana just just died and then there was one or two others right after that so you know clearly you guys have have really put in the time to get those combos working really well and uh, I mean there's a reason you guys managed to pull off you know first place for the the season so. Once again, congratulations for tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the floor to you guys for any shout outs. Uh, feel free to, you know, go through the team or whatever you want to do here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pretty much the same thing as, as before. You know, these guys are good and, and we enjoy doing it. And, um, you know, the, everybody we played this, this season in the league has all been super cool people. Everybody, we've uh, all the matches we played against, the Disturbance, uh, you know, Wraithling, I talked to him a few times. Pretty cool guy and, and all of them are. So it's been a lot of fun and, uh, it's nice to have some friendly, uh, some friendly battles there, and um, yeah, I think we are looking forward to continue moving forward together. What about you guys? Yeah, our time in Div, Div D West has been a blast. Arrow, thank you for casting us, man. You're doing a great job, and shout out to my teammates. Yeah, same. Uh, I've been, I've been loving this, uh, the, the, the division that we're in. Hopefully, we'll go up next division uh, season or whatever, but. Yeah, anytime uh, anybody wants to scrim with us and Div D, just let us know, I guess, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. I also do want to give a shout out to Michael as well because he has done some stuff like this before and has taught us a lot about uh, what we need to be doing as far as rotations go and things like that and um, has really, really helped us kind of guide us through here. So uh, Michael's been a big part of that and, and uh, definitely thank you. Ripski, I see you lurking down there. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Uh, oh. yeah, well, looking forward to the next match. I think uh, we'll be playing Page on Stitches. So, yeah. but that that's in the other half of the bracket. You'll be ah. you'll be looking at either <laughs> uh, Clouded Minds or OC Peach Boys in your next right. match next week. So, okay, yeah, I will give a shout out to Mr. Bummer not here too, Ripsky, uh, because he was a late addition to the team that we kind of just. Uh, I think him and I just started playing some Storm League together. Well, I guess it was Team League at the time, but. Uh, played some games together and, and had some fun and, and uh, he joined the team and it's been uh, we've been clicking pretty well all of us well yeah, definitely. well fantastic guys uh, last thing is there are there any uh, secret strategies you want to go ahead and share for for everybody out there in D West that you want to you know tell them to look out for from you <laughs> no <laughs> whoa no comment <laughs> no, no comment what well good deal <laughs> guys uh enjoy your evening thank you so much for the opportunity here and and uh being a little bit flexible on my my schedule to see if i could you know make it obviously we didn't have to start late so worked out for everybody anyway but um it's been an absolute pleasure and uh you know who knows maybe next week i'll see you again thanks you too hey man sounds, sounds good, good. we sounds appreciate good. it very much absolutely everybody see you
All righty. So there you have it, folks. Uh, I, I don't recall the exact stats. It was something like, uh, you know, 15 to 1 or 19 to 1 or something like that on game 1. 14 to 2 in favor of Boogan Squad on both these games. 2 0 for the domination in this best of three for Boogan Squad. Once again, that will move them forward into uh, their next match versus either Clouded Minds or OC Peach Boys. And that, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. I believe that's happening. Let's see if that's on the uh, schedule here. That looks, it is. So it'll be on Thursday. It's not yet uh, got a caster assigned, but it's at Thursday at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 uh, Pacific, as I forget which uh, time zones are out there. So check that out for their next matchup. And as always, uh, feel free to stop by any time for these NGS casts. We've got a great lineup of casters. We're going to see some more heroic division uh matchups coming up here as well so check the calendar and make sure to keep track of it even later in the day because some of these uh some of these matches do get assigned very late in the day this one i i just picked up about an hour beforehand so keep an eye on that if there's a match you want to see make sure to set a reminder go back to the page and see if anybody's picked it up until then have a wonderful evening good luck with all of your matches in the playoffs and we'll see you soon